Testimony Treasures, Volume 3, Chapter 12, Family Worship. If ever there was a time when every house should be a house of prayer, it is now. Infidelity and skepticism prevail. Iniquity abounds. Corruption flows in the vital currents of the soul, and rebellion against God breaks out in the life. Enslaved by sin, the moral powers are under the tyranny of Satan. The soul is made the sport of his temptations, and unless some mighty arm is stretched out to rescue him, man goes where the arch-rebel leads the way. And yet, in this time of fearful peril, some who profess to be Christians have no family worship. They do not honor God in the home. They do not teach their children to love and fear Him. Many have separated themselves so far from Him that they feel under condemnation in approaching Him. They cannot come boldly unto the throne of grace, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. They have not a living connection with God. Theirs is a form of godliness without the power. The idea that prayer is not essential is one of Satan's most successful devices to ruin souls. Prayer is communion with God, the fountain of wisdom, the source of strength and peace and happiness. Jesus prayed to the Father with strong crying and tears. Paul exhorts believers to pray without ceasing, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, making known their requests to God. Pray one for another, James says. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. By sincere, earnest prayer, parents should make a hedge about their children. They should pray with full faith that God will abide with them and that holy angels will guard them and their children from Satan's cruel power. In every family, there should be a fixed time for morning and evening worship. How appropriate it is for parents to gather their children about them before the fast is broken, to thank the Heavenly Father for His protection during the night, and to ask Him for His help and guidance and watch care during the day. How fitting, also, when evening comes, for parents and children to gather once more before Him and thank Him for the blessings of the day that is past. The father, or in his absence the mother, should conduct the worship, selecting a portion of Scripture that is interesting and easily understood. The service should be short. When a long chapter is read and a long prayer offered, the service is made wearisome, and at its close a sense of relief is felt. God is dishonored when the hour of worship is made dry and irksome, when it is so tedious, so lacking in interest, that the children dread it. Making the Worship Interesting Fathers and mothers make the hour of worship intensely interesting. There is no reason why this hour should not be the most pleasant and enjoyable of the day. A little thought given to preparation for it will enable you to make it full of interest and profit. From time to time, let the service be varied. Questions may be asked on the portion of Scripture read, and a few earnest, timely remarks may be made. A song of praise may be sung. The prayer offered should be short and pointed. In simple, earnest words, let the one who leads in prayer praise God for His goodness and ask Him for help. As circumstances permit, let the children join in the reading and the prayer. Eternity alone will reveal the good with which such seasons of worship are fraught. The life of Abraham, the friend of God, was a life of prayer. Wherever he pitched his tent, close beside it was built an altar, upon which were offered the morning and the evening sacrifice. When his tent was removed, the altar remained, and the roving Canaanite, as he came to that altar, knew who had been there. When he had pitched his tent, he repaired the altar and worshipped the living God. 
so the homes of Christians should be lights in the world. From them, morning and evening, prayer should ascend to God as sweet incense. And as the morning dew, His mercies and blessings will descend upon the suppliants. Fathers and mothers, each morning and evening, gather your children around you, and in humble supplication, lift the heart to God for help. Your dear ones are exposed to temptation. Daily annoyances beset the path of young and old. Those who would live patient, loving, cheerful lives must pray. Only by receiving constant help from God can we gain the victory over self. Each morning, consecrate yourselves and your children to God for that day. Make no calculation for months or years. These are not yours. One brief day is given you. As if it were your last on earth, work during its hours for the Master. Lay all your plans before God to be carried out or given up, as His providence shall indicate. Accept His plans instead of your own, even though their acceptance requires the abandonment of cherished projects. Thus, the life will be molded more and more after the divine example. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Christ is the connecting link between God and man. He has promised His personal intercession. He places the whole virtue of His righteousness on the side of the suppliant. He pleads for man, and man, in need of divine help, pleads for himself in the presence of God, using the influence of the one who gave his life for the life of the world. As we acknowledge before God our appreciation of Christ's merits, fragrance is given to our intercessions. As we approach God through the virtue of the Redeemer's merits, Christ places us close by His side, encircling us with His human arm, while with His divine arm He grasps the throne of the infinite. He puts His merits as sweet incense in the censer in our hands, in order to encourage our petitions. He promises to hear and answer our supplications.